You know what happened? Moses had his rod. Mm -hmm. If you look properly, read the Bible properly, the Bible says all of them too had their <laughs> rod. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody gets the rod for hand. So you can see that the whole idea at the end of the day is that we, we grow into love. Amen. Not religion. Religion is a cruel, no. it's a wicked thing. Yes. Religion is cruelty. Religion is it's just a forum for the devil to deceive people more and more. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the end of the faith is love. The Bible says that anybody that does not love his brother mm -hmm. does not even know where he's going. Yes. The darkness has already covered his, his eyes because in reality, the revelation we're having now is that we are one indivisible body. Mm -hmm. We say these things because we read them in the Bible, but it's true. <coughs> in this world now, we put on physical bodies and we, we have different forms and we, we kind of, you know, Look at each other as different. Praise God. Hallelujah. Different orientation, different way of preaching. Yes. But I want to tell you something. But we are one. Yes. Praise God. Before I go on, something says we should just greet one another. Yes. Can we go around and greet one another? Are we ready to fly? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now let us start off from the book of Psalms, chapter 102. This is going to be a prelude into the message. Psalm chapter 102, I start from verse 18. This shall be written for the generation to come, mm -hmm. and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. The Lord. Amen. For he has looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven did the Lord behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to lose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. Praise God. Hallelujah. When the people shall be gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakened my strength in the way, he shortened my days. I said, Oh God, take me. Not away in the midst of my days. Amen. Thy years are throughout all generations. Yes. Of all thou hast laid the foundation of the earth mm -hmm. and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Now this is this this is verse 26. It says, They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Hallelujah. Yeah, all of them shall wax old like a garment. Mm. As a vesture shall thou change them, and they shall be changed. Amen. But thou art the same, and thy years have no end. Hallelujah. Now, listen to this part. The children of thy servant shall continue, continue. and that she shall be established before thee. Amen. God. Hallelujah. Right here by the Spirit of God, the psalmist was already speaking about a promise, the ultimate promise of the Lord, which is immortality, incorruptibility, which is an endless life after the order of Melchizedek. John was to say this later on in 1st John that those that do the will of God mm -hmm. abide forever. forever. Hallelujah. They continue because they put on the attributes of their father. Hallelujah. Yeah. God, he says that God continues on and on and it's the seed of his servant. Do you know the seed? Do you know what the seed of the servant is? The seed in you is the Christ in you. Mm. Amen. It shall, they shall continue. Mm -hmm. God, of course, we're not speaking about um, continuing and eating spaghetti and whatever upon the earth. We're speaking about continuity in the life of God. Amen. Walking in the very life of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is what the gospel is all about. Yes. Paul says that we have become to Mount Zion, uh -huh. the heavenly Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You can see the psalmist here was speaking of a future 
event. Yes. But Paul comes on the scene and says, We have come into the heaven of Jerusalem. Praise God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. We have come to the place. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we're seeing these few these scriptures are being fulfilled now. Amen. Praise God. We are being gathered in one unto the Lord. Hallelujah. As we hear the voice of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. Like what it. is Easter about? Easter. What do we call Easter, brethren? What is Easter about? What is Easter? Can somebody just give me a summary of what Easter is in a sentence, two sentences? Resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, over the years it has become a kind of, you know, a traditional thing to look forward to a, a, you know, a particular day in a year and celebrate it as Easter. Praise God. Hallelujah. But that's not what the Lord called us from. Even Christmas and all these things, those things are not, these are man-made events. Praise God. Hallelujah. Of course, if you invite me to your functions, I'll be there. I'll be the first to go there. See, we don't have to, when we hear things, we don't have to become religious. religious. We become proud and, you know, if somebody invites me for Easter dinner or Easter party or Easter fellowship, I'll go. You see, but I want us to understand it, it is the revelation in the resurrection that counts. Yes. God, because God wants us to live the life of the resurrection. Amen. Not to mark a day or to put aside a particular day in a, in a year and say this is Easter. Easter can be your life every day. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because we are called to live the life of the resurrection. Yes. Resurrection is a life that is available right now for every man who has ears to hear. Yes. Resurrection is not a future event. When something happens, you, you have to get this thing very, very clear. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We must understand that we have been begotten of the incorruptible seed, that word that our sister spoke about, that word that has been from the beginning, who we are begotten of that same word. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God, hallelujah. Amen. And that thing is in you, whether you know it or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you go through in this life as a man. That thing remains in you, praise God. Amen. Amen. Waiting for you to come back and realize it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That is what the Bible calls the pearl of great price. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ gave a parable of somebody who found a treasure hidden underneath the earth. Mm -hmm. For the joy of the of this thing that this man found, he left everything, sold everything just to possess that thing. Mm -hmm. And what do you think that thing is? Mm. Is this earth? Something has been hidden in your earth. Mm -hmm. Something has been hidden in this earthen vessel. Mm -hmm. And the gospel of God is here to fetch it out. To unveil this great mystery. Amen. Because as it's written, nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. So he's not talking about um, going to tell the other brother. I saw I saw I saw that brother the other day with a sister. I saw him drinking beer in a joint. <laughs> the Bible says everything that is hidden will be exposed. God is not on that level. God is what higher, higher than, 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 than that. Amen. Praise God. God is higher than yes. praise God, amen. 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 Speaking about a mystery, something that has been hidden in man for ages. Hallelujah. God wants to bring every man back to life. Amen. Praise God. And when you begin to know what this secret of life, things become easy for you. Things become wonderful. Things become beautiful. You begin to realize that you are an integral part of the living God. You are one with your father. Hallelujah. You begin to understand that God never left you. That you are only you know, in the dark. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are going to visit the story of Lazarus. Lazarus is a very good example of the resurrection. Now I want us to understand that that is a parable itself. So the resurrection is not something about a physical body coming out of the grave. So you can come out of the grave and still remain a dead man. You know that? Yes. Praise God. To walk in this life with a physical body and doesn't that's not, that's not life. 
Praise God. And to have a big car, big, big, good job, money, you know, fine children who are doing well and everything is going fine. That does not, that's not what life is. Praise God. That's not what that's not the life that Jesus Christ says, I have come that you may have life. Mm. So we're talking of a life in the infinite, a life that is that of God. Mm. A life that when a man possesses it, nothing can tamper with your peace and your joy. Amen. A life when you rule and reign over all things. Mm. Because that is what God gave you from the beginning. You know that? Yes. When God said, let us create man in our image and likeness, you know that is you? God did not create another man. At all. When God says, let him have dominion over all things, Hallelujah. that is you. It's a corporate man. It's one man with many, 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 many members. And look at the members. Paul spoke a mystery about a body. One body, many members. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 And look at the body here. Hallelujah. And that is the man that God blessed from the beginning. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says that I may be found in him. Mm. Because in the fall, we lost our way yes. and we are found out of him. Hallelujah. But John the, the Baptist comes on the scene and says that he must increase. Amen. Amen. Increase. Glory to God. See? Because anyone that does not have the son does not have life. At all. In him dwells the fullness of God. In him we are complete. complete. Hallelujah. In him we are complete. In him. You have to have the revelation of him. Because when you begin to know him, you begin to know yourself. Yes, sir. When you begin to know yourself, you begin to know him. Amen. Because the way he is is the way you are. Yes. Amen. That is what the gospel came to reveal. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. This treasure has been hidden in 18 vessels. But thank God today, this vessel is being split. As you hear the voice of the Lord. Yes. Praise God, the voice of the Lord is mighty upon the waters. Mm -hmm. The voice of the Lord is shakes the wilderness. Mm. The voice of the Lord splits those vessels. Hallelujah. Amen. And when those vessels are split, you begin to see the glory Hallelujah. of the Lord made flesh revealed from within you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because a wonderful thing. I want to visit the story of Lazarus. Lazarus was somebody we thought was dead. Everybody thought Lazarus was dead, but Jesus Christ used a statement. He says, Lazarus was what? Asleep. Asleep. Amen. Lazarus was what? Asleep. Asleep. It is a language of the spirit. You can see death and sleep are synonymous with one another. Mm -hmm. When somebody says he's asleep, it's like you are losing consciousness of all reality. When you are asleep, are you aware of anything? No. Mm -hmm. So you can see death is actually a deep state of sleep, spiritually speaking. Praise God. And the dead can't see, they can't hear, they don't know anything. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you say Adam died in the transgression, you see Adam became ignorant of all reality. Mm. See, in the day you take up that fruit, which is actually the knowledge of men, the knowledge of religion in the life of this world. Exactly. Now I want you to understand that religion is not just found within the walls of an establishment that we call church or we call a place of worship. All men are religious. All men have their traditional kind of beliefs. And all these things are in the dark. These are idols that we have formulated one way or the other, praise God. And even in the dark, you try to formulate God. You try to, you know, look for something that you call God to worship. And let me tell you the truth, many things that people call God it's not God. Praise God. Many things that we call God is what? It's not God. It's very important you understand these things. Many things that we formulate in religion has got nothing to do with God. And I'm going to prove it to you today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just like Lazarus, people are in, their, in the grave. You know when you are in the tomb? Everything is dark in there. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. And when you are in the dark, you live in relation to things that don't exist. And these things are chasing you, hunting you, worrying you, tormenting you day and night. Praise God. Just because you are in the dark. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
And let us see what Jesus Christ did. The Bible says, can we read it carefully? John? John chapter 11. The story of Lazarus. I'm going to start from the, from towards the ending so that we're able to get the major things. Praise God. John chapter 11. I'm going to start from verse... Verse 27. Jesus had asked Martha, praise God, do you believe your, your, your brother will arrive? Let us start from verse 27. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went away and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come and called it for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she, are, she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been there, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you led him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus what? Wept. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Praise God. Jesus therefore, Jesus therefore, again groaning himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take you away the stone. Martha, praise God. The sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he is thinking. So he has been dead for four days. Jesus said unto her, Said not I unto thee that if thou believest, thou shalt see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 How many of us can pray that way? <laughs> Very difficult. You come to the place where you say, Father, I thank you because I know say you know if you say it in broken language. Papa, I know say I break can't go you did. <laughs> Hallelujah. No shaking. Amen. How many of us can come to that place? Amen. Do you know? Don't be angry if I say something. Do you know some of the things we do the exactly because we think God is Father. We are trying to reach him. When your son, your son comes to you, eh, and um, he says, Daddy, I want some, I want a, a panino. Will you start saying, Daddy, Daddy, I want panino, panino. No, no. Your papa not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jesus can say something. Don't pray like the, the, the word, the, 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 the hidden. They think that there are many words. Well, they shall be here. The one word you pray is that the God not here. You know here? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean you shouldn't pray. <laughs> Praise God. But well, I'm just trying to tell you that some of the things we do as men. Yes. When the time comes, you, you will look back and you will be so ashamed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, you will be so ashamed. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God even knows what we need before we ask Him. That is true. Praise God. At times we look God like Mugu. Do you know that? No. At times we look at God as what? A mugu. He don't know what he wants. God don't know. So we did tell him. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Doesn't mean you shouldn't pray. John chapter 11, verse 42. 
and I knew that thou hearest me always because of the people which stand by, I said it. That they, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had spoken, now something is wrong. I missed one, one scripture where Jesus can say that I'm the resurrection. Yes. Where is that one? Can you get it for me? Verse. It says. Should be before verse 27. Yeah. 25. Okay. Can somebody, uh, let, what is it, John chapter 11, 11 25. 25. 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed, believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But why did Jesus Christ, what did you lady say before Jesus Christ said that? Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus Christ now told her that I am that resurrection. I am that life you are speaking about. You know, up to today, people have not still gotten this. No. Do you know, brethren, have not still gotten this, this word yet? You know, this thing is open for all of us to hear, to see. You see, the old Hebrew belief is that tomorrow, people will physically come out of their graves yeah. and come out and live again. But Jesus Christ now clearly annulled that belief of the Jews and said clearly, clearly, my, my sister, my love, I am the resurrection. The resurrection. I am the life. the life. I am the Life. There. You see, that means there are not two. No. I am the resurrection. I am the life. life. He that believes in me shall never die. die but live. Who will die? Shall live if you're dead, you shall live. Again. again. So that's why we're, we're, we're coming back to life again. And I told you that when you come back to life, what happens is that it's no longer I but Christ. 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 Because he says I'm the life. Now if you look at the definition of Christ, Christ is not a man that lived 2,000 years ago. That is not what Christ is. You see, we, the mistake we make as Christians is that we limit Christ to a man. Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. We limited Christ to a physical man with long hair, blue eyes, and that's why you have photos, with long blue, statues, and all this stuff. But that is not Jesus. That is not what God intended to reveal to us. But the, what God intended to reveal to us is the man of the spirit who has been from the beginning in God manifesting himself in the flesh. Praise God. And whether we like it or not, or whether we believe it or not, that same life of Christ is our life. Yes. He says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am that life. That life from the beginning. That life in which is the fullness and the glory of God. I am that life. And anybody who awaits, now bear in mind, I told you, all men are dead in Adam. Yes. It's written in the book of Corinthians, chapter 15, in Adam, all Amen. die. All. It's a spiritual phenomenon. All men are dead, and death is synonymous with ignorance. You don't know anything. Praise God. All men, plus the one with the big, big pulpit, big, big churches, and branches here and there, and the daddies, and the heroes, and the reverends, and all, they're all big, big. their coffin is even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. You need to have your eyes open in the spirit to see these things, you'll be shocked. Hallelujah. Amen. You know that brother that comes, I'm going to soon come around from Novara. Yes, that that's, a very, that's a big man eh, in the spirit. Eh? You will see. That guy, when he, when he first heard this message, and he has been a very faithful man for many years. Many years, and what is my he got started screaming, say, but what? What are all these pastors preaching? He was killed, he said, but what are all these pastors?
was preaching in the churches. So all these people are being deceived. He went to Iowa, if I recall it, the, the guy was so, the thing, he was so shocked when the God opened his eyes to see certain truths. I am the resurrection, I am the life. See, the Father has sent the Son to bring you back to reality. Amen. To awake you from the dead. See, Lazarus is an allegory of you and I. Lazarus is a parable of you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. The way God is bringing us out of the pit. Out of the dark places. See, when you are in the cave, you are in the dark. You don't see anything. You, you, you think you are, sometimes you think you are watching something, sitting somewhere. You don't know anything. And at times it can be very offensive when yes. you need to know the truth. <coughs> Unless you are humble, you will not receive it. That's all. You cannot take it. That what have been the Some people now hear the truth, they know. But because of the so much clout and so much, they can't come out and they can't let go. They come out from that place. Come out of that dungeon, that dark place. Praise God. Come back into the light, into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Even Jesus Christ, you know he died? Jesus Christ tasted of humanity. He descended and tasted of life in the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Even Jesus Christ himself had to be laid in the tomb and the stone was what? Later. Was rolled away. The same way it was rolled away from Lazarus. This is why it says in the book of Revelation, I was dead, but now I am alive forever. And I have the word the key. key. <laughs> And that is the key is giving us today. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the key is giving us. You see, Amen. the gospel is a very higher, a higher thing than you think. Gospel is not about, you know, it's just not about just plate on your table and, and money and money, money and give me, give me, no, give me, no. give me, give me. No. And you know, it's higher. Yes. We're talking about inheriting the glory of God. Hallelujah. The totality of God is ours. Hallelujah. He says, I am your exceeding great, great reward. reward. Hallelujah. That God is your reward. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. But somebody said, well, what are the dollars? Well, <laughs> if you have God, you have the dollars. Of course. You are Amen. And let me, tell you, let, me, let me tell you one thing. It's not your ability to have physical money that actually makes you rich. No. See, it's all in our mind. In our mind. See, and let me tell you, the fact that you have all the money and all, it doesn't mean that it's yours anyway. You know that? The end and the fullness thereof is the Lord. Lord. The Lord. You could live on one day. Of course. If you like, secure it and put it in wheel upon wheel, now lie. <laughs> now lie. <laughs> see, you will leave your body and you will see people no rocking your, your, rock your sweat. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The end and the fullness thereof is the Lord. 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 Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself that you think that you own anything as a man. Everything belongs to the Lord. Praise God to you. And Paul said, What if all things are ours? Yes. Paul writes it to the Corinthians. Yes. He said, Don't let anybody deceive, deceive you. you. All things are oh. yours. All things are the Lord's because you are the Lord's. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. Of course, it doesn't mean that we don't uh, walk. No. <laughs> it, doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that we don't help one another. I don't know. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, because at times we get so spiritual that you know, we forget uh, the basic things of life. A brother is in need, you can't even help and all that kind of stuff. Amen? Amen. Mm. And at times, you know, there are certain things we also learn in, in, in brotherhood, you know, as we grow in, in unity of the faith, even as, you know, we have to learn to integrity among one another. It's very important. You know, I know people who are very good givers, and I don't like the change. Why? Because people they thought they, they called brethren were using them. You know that? They were not faithful. See, they, you see, they, were, they were kind and they were always giving and giving and they, they discovered you know, that this were not brethren. Exactly. They were taking advantage. See, I know people like that, they come to church and when they come, it's for, it's for coins. See, I know that many, many, it's how to collect more money at the end of the service. That's all they look for. See, a sister at uh, Lodi, I won't mention her name, she, she, uh, she had a problem with her husband. And, uh, you know, that period, we're always coming around and we always, you know, we give her the little we have. Take, 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 take. 
I remember the day came when we really didn't have, and she came around. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we don't have. You know, this woman cut us off. Of course. You know that? So we don't take advantage of each other in the name of the Lord. Amen. We want to respect and love one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So let's go back. Jesus Christ came to, comes to the grave of Lazarus and tells them to remove the stone. See, the stone, the Bible talks about the heart of stone. See it? That is actually placed in, the, in our hearts in the trans We become added. Hallelujah. And this stone must what? Be removed. Praise God. That thing is blocking our sight of God. Before Jesus Christ will call Lazarus, that stone has to be. Removed. Otherwise, he will not hear. Yes. Are you wondering why at times you, you preach to people, they don't understand you? You speak to them, they don't hear. Because the heart is what? It's there. See, but the Bible says that when the heart turns to the Lord, a veil shall be taken away. The veil is taken away. When the veil is taken away, you will see yourself shining as the morning star. Hallelujah. You see yourself in your glory. Amen. See it? Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a wonderful thing. Praise God. So, God says, Jesus Christ says, Lazarus, comfort. And then, that is a very symbolic thing. When Jesus Christ shouts with that voice, groans and says, Lazarus, comfort. He did that to demonstrate a parable. Praise God. Because what was coming forth from the mouth of Jesus actually the voice of the Lord Himself. It's the voice of God. It's the voice of the Spirit. It's the communication of the Spirit. And Lazarus has to hear that to come out. That's the spoken word. It's the word. It's, it's not just ordinary letters. At all. Letters. You know this kind of called letters? People think that you carry Bible and you read it, that that's the word of God. That's not, I've always told you, this same Bible that I call the word of God can become satanic scriptures, yes. satanic verses. Yes. If you read it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. See, what, what is satanic? What do you think satanic? See, satan is that which hides your identity. He's the deceiver. He's the one that covers you, veils you from your true identity. That, that's the work of satan. Yes. Satan hides the fact from you that you are the glorious bright and morning star. Mm. That is what Satan, that is the work of Satan. The work of Satan is to darken your understanding so that you see God as an enemy. And when you see God as an enemy, nothing will work out well for you again. Amen. You can't live a happy life. At all. You're always running, you're always thinking something's after you, you're always thinking, you know. And all this kind of thing, you can never have peace and joy except you know that fellowship with the God the Father, the creator of the heaven and earth. Unless you have that, there is fear in you. There will always be doubt in you. And Satan's work, that's his work, to deceive you. See it, day and night, to deceive you that you have a Father in heaven. And if you read the scriptures according to the letter, it gives you a very wrong impression of what God is. If you cannot read the scriptures by the, by the Spirit, it only put you in bondage. Many Christians are in bondage. Many, many Christians are in bondage and they're telling the truth. You see, when we come out to tell them the truth, they some are offended. Many people are in bondage to, to religious traditions. That you have to do it this way, do it that way, do many things that they, they call out from the Bible. Very cunning. They look very scriptural. But they're all deceived. They don't weigh one thing inside of God. Many things, praise God, from your tithes to your your different kind of you know, things that all these things are all deceit. Lies. Lies. Praise God. I've, never, I've seen these things in heaven. God has shown me these things. I heard these things. I saw them. And when you are there, you'll be so sorry for people. Of course. People are deceived. Praise God. And God wants to set this people free from all these Amen. things. Amen. Amen. He wants you to work as a son of God, not as a slave mm. to letters and to work in fear. That's what God wants. Praise God. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that you won't put money in the offering. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you preaching? No. No, 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 listen to me. You have to understand. I, I, will, I, will not I will not deceive. I will not deceive anybody because of the game. That's true. Let me just tell you. I will not deceive people because of the game. Praise God. And those scriptures, I'm going, I'm going to share them to you by the Spirit and tell you what they meant. Amen. See, right from Malachi, all this was speaking of incorruptibility. Yes, mm. It was when he speaks about, you know, rebuking the devourer, the cancer woman. He's speaking about, you know, immortality, this death. 
that God is going to rebuke that thing in you. We will share, we will share on that thing later. Huh? And we will just understand what that offering upon the Lord's altar is. Praise God, it's not about your one tenth. Mm. God is bigger than one tenth. Okay. Your one tenth is not enough. God wants everything about you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You start calculating. Yes. When you have your money, you calculate it. Yes. <laughs> for God again. Yes, sir. You're going to calculate for God. For God. You're going to calculate. God, God, God delivered us from, from religion. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. But make the offering the full up. Okay, we'll move on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, so we'll move on. So he he calls out Lazarus. First of all, the, the, the heart stone is removed, which is the, the heart that is unable to hear or discern the things of the spirit. And it comes out. The Bible says that Lazarus was bound with what? Ropes and with a what? Plot all over him, which shows he was bound to the elements. Yes. This shows a state of spiritual state of every man in this world. Mm. We are bound to the elements of this age. See it? Bound to corruption, bound to various traditional beliefs, and all these things have tied us down and limited us down. Amen. Amen. If you look at a bird, a bird that grows in a cage. Have you seen a bird that grows in a cage? If you try to release it, you know, in fact, you won't be able to fly. That is how we are as men. We have been limited in our minds, in our thoughts, our, our beliefs of what God is and how to get to God and all these things. Religion has not helped us. Religion, how many people have really come to it? We are always trying to attain to something. You are always waiting for something. You are always striving to. You are always trying to be. You can never ever come to the place through religion. Except you hear the voice of the Spirit. Mm. So it's the voice of your Father. Mm. Hallelujah. That's why in the book of Revelations, chapter 3, it says, I knock on the door of your heart. Mm. Anyone who hears my voice, voice. sees the voice. The voice. Praise God. And it dies with you. It's a fellowship, divine fellowship. And that fellowship does only one thing. And that is to awaken you back. See it. Are waking you back into your true identity as the Christ. Hallelujah. That is what will abolish your poverty, your sorrow, and everything that you have, all your problems, just by this voice. Amen. Very important we know these things. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you can see resurrection is about coming out from ignorance into the light. Yes. Hallelujah. God wants us to know that it is now we can begin to walk in this reality now as we hear the voice. It's like the dawning of a great new day. Yeah. The, the light comes out, and before you know it, you are in the noon day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Before you know it, you are what? In the noon yeah. day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. So let us be, how do I put it? Be rightfully aligned with the word of God. Now, could you talk about, God said, I want to show you something today. Come to the book of Daniel chapter 12. This I think I've shared with you before. And I want us to, to know these things again. Amen. Amen. You see, when you when you know yourself, you know that you are righteous already. Amen. 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 You are perfect when you wake up into the reality of what God is saying in this hour. Hallelujah. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. From verse 1. Are you there? Yes. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standed for the children of that people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time that people shall be what? Delivered. Everyone that shall be found written what in the book. Hallelujah. Amen. And Many of them that do what? Sleep. That do what? Sleep. Sleep where? In, in, the, the, dust. Dust. in the dust of the earth. Shall awake. 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 Some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting content. Amen. Amen. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Amen. 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 
But that old Daniel shut off the words and sealed the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be what? Increases. Now you can see this divine knowledge. Amen. What is running to and fro is your eye. Your eye of the understanding is going through and there's something happened. The words have been unseen today. Amen. Everything has been hidden in the book. The great mystery of the ages have been unseen today, brethren. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And you can see your salvation is not by your acts. It's not by what you you can't you can't end salvation. All you can do is to await back. Resurrection life is a life for now. You don't you're not looking out for signs. Because the day you look out for me to put on wings. <laughs> For me to shine here upon this pulpit to be sh make sh you know, if, if that's what you're looking for, you will never see. That is why they did not recognize Jesus. You know that people were not un were unable to recognize Jesus because they were looking for some kind of sign. But he was an ordinary regular guy. He was not different from you and I. See, I was sharing someone in London the other day. I told them, you know, this boy a bit religious. I told them maybe if Jesus was here today. Maybe you have the jeans, you know, falling. Yes. Low waist. Low waist. You know what they call low waist? Yeah, yeah. Maybe Jesus will put that and come out and, and share the, the word in the synagogue. And they will say, who is this I man? This <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I wanted to tell you that he was an ordinary man. You don't look out for physical signs. Physical feet. Don't, look, don't judge according to your eye sight. It's very important. When you walk this walk with God, we have to learn to humble ourselves to just see Christ and Christ alone Amen. in every man. That's why Paul says, henceforth, do I know no man after, after the flesh, flesh, but after his flesh. flesh. If you know man after the spirit, you will see the Son of God, the Christ in Amen. Brother Ben, the Christ in you know, Elder Funke, the Christ in Queen. See it. And Paul, for Paul to write that, you see, Paul too had to exercise himself. Exactly. You know, as if it came easy to him. See, most of these things that you see, even Jesus Christ saying, get it behind Satan. Or saying, what shall it profit a man to gain the world and lose? Jesus Christ too had to, to learn obedience. He too, at the time of this world, he too had to, to conform himself to those things. So as we're preaching to the preacher, he's also exercising himself because you need some kind of temptation. Yes. At times you forget to be in the spirit when you meet situations. Yes. And the lion will come out of you. <laughs> Amen. Have you left church after preaching a very good sermon? And when you get outside, you meet a situation, man, the devil speaks out of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. And by the time you are finished, the same devil will come back and tell you, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I, don't, I, went, I went somewhere and I met a brother. He was provoked by another brother somewhere. Okay. In a very provoking manner. This guy pulled his shirt, wanted to find the brother. Holy brother. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> the guy pulled, he wanted to find. <laughs> and I was there watching him then. Later on, later on, <laughs> after I met him, later he called me to my father. Please forget, I'm sorry. I told him, look here, am I a small boy? <laughs> I said that you even try, sir. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So we have to exercise ourselves in this thing. Exercise ourselves in godliness. Yes. You know. Jesus could to have to learn obedience. obedience. Yeah, he still had to grow in stature. Mm. It was not a one day thing for him. Right? Yes. He too has to learn. Paul too had to learn. Amen. So we don't have to give up at times. Amen. Amen. When uh, when we 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 are trying to make some mistakes. Yes. And uh, don't give up and don't get angry with yourself. Yes. Just know that your your sin has already been taken care of two thousand years ago. And every sin that you ever have has already been endured. God is not aware of anything called sin. Oh. He sees you as his son. Yes. Amen. Yes. When you sin and do as you want, you will suffer the consequences. Of course. But it's not day. God's hand on you. God is not punishing you. Amen. You are only just suffering for what you have brought on yourself. Yes. 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 That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So please, brother, tell us, come, let us keep the resurrection. Amen. Pray for one another. Help one another. Amen. There's no pride in this thing. At all. There's no pride. No, no try to assess you whether it's holy enough or not. No. We are above that. Amen. Let Amen. us just humbly pray for one another. Lift each other in prayers and.
you know, and strengthen one another. Yes. Praise the Lord, keep you in all things. Amen. Amen. Can we stand up? Hallelujah. Yes.